Good morning. And it is good to hear that bell welcome us into worship, and we are thankful that you have joined us in worship today in person and from wherever you are at, uh, joining us in worship online today, and we are glad that you have done so. Uh, I'm Pastor Randall Quested, and we're glad that you have joined us here at East Need Rose this day. We have announcements that we are going to uh, tell you about before our worship begins. Uh, quilting will be happening this Wednesday, November 11th, here at East Naderos. Confirmation for 7th and 8th graders has moved back to East Naderos, and we will be doing that also this Wednesday from 6.30 to 7. And the food bank is open that same day. So a busy day on Wednesday, uh, and that that is open. Uh, but tomorrow evening is a busy day also in the church. Uh, it is getting time for thinking about annual meetings and uh, the new year and uh, what we will be doing as a church. So it will be, uh, uh, I believe, an important meeting, which will be happening tomorrow evening here at East Nero's once again. Uh, we have our joint council meeting, which happens at 7 o'clock, but the individual council meetings will be beginning at 6 o'clock. So several birthdays. To celebrate this week, Jesse Schultz, Shea Fiala, Caston Rogers, Dylan Brandy, Adam Wilson, Molly Siddig, Scott Hookie, and Myra Koenig. So happy birthday to all of them, and Dick and Lori Berg are having an anniversary this week. So if you see any of these people, please wish them well on these celebrations in their life. With that, are there any other announcements from you this morning that I might be forgetting. If not, I invite you to stand as you are able as our worship begins with a brief order of confession <coughs> and forgiveness. And we begin this service in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Almighty God, to whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hid, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. If we say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves, and the truth is not in us. But if we confess our sins, God, who is faithful and just, will forgive our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Most merciful God, we confess, we confess that we are, are in bondage to sin and cannot, cannot free ourselves. ourselves. We, we have sinned, sinned against you in thought, word, word and deed by what, what we have done and by what we have left undone. We, we have not loved you with our whole heart. heart. We, we have not loved, loved our neighbors as ourselves. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us. Forgive us, renew us, and lead us, so that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your holy name. Amen. In the mercy of Almighty God, Jesus Christ was given to die for us. And for his sake, God gives us all our sins. The an ordained minister of the Church of Christ and by his authority, I therefore declare to you the entire forgiveness of all your sins in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. I invite you to join as we sing our opening hymn, O God, our help in ages past. <laughs> Amen. 
The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And also with you. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. We sing the hymn of the day. together the prayer of the day. Let us pray. Stir up, O Lord, the, the wills, wills of, of your faithful, faithful people to seek more eagerly the help you offer, that at the last they may enjoy the fruit of salvation through your Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. You may be seated. Good morning. Good morning. The first lesson today is Amos 5, 18 through 24. Alas, for you who desire the day of the Lord, why do you want the day of the Lord? It is darkness, not light, as if someone fled from a lion and was met by a bear, or went into the house and rested a hand against the wall and was bitten by a snake. Is not the day of the Lord darkness, not light? and gloom with no brightness in it. I hate, I despise your festivals, and I take no delight in your solemn assemblies. Even though you offer me your burnt offerings and grain offerings, I will not accept them. And the offerings of well-being of your fatted animals, 
I will not look upon. Take away from me the noise of your songs. I will not listen to the melody of your harps. But let justice roll down like waters and righteousness like an ever-flowing stream. The word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be, be to God. God. Today we'll read Psalm 70 in unison. Be pleased, O God, to deliver me. me. O Lord, make haste to help me. Let those who seek my life be ashamed and altogether dismayed. Let those who take pleasure in my misfortune draw back and be disgraced. Let those who say to me, Aha, and gloat over me turn back, because they are ashamed. Let all who seek you rejoice and be glad in you. Let those who love your salvation say forever, Great is the Lord. But as for me, I am poor and needy. Come to me speedily, O God. You are my helper and my deliverer. O Lord, do not tarry. Second lesson today is 1 Thessalonians 4, 13 through 18. We do not want to be uninformed, brothers and sisters, about those who have died, so that you may not grieve as others do who have no hope. For since we believe that Jesus died and rose again, even so, through Jesus, God will bring with him those who have died. For this we declare to you by the word of the Lord, that we who are alive, who are left until the coming of the Lord, will by no means precede those who have died. For the Lord himself, with a cry of command, with the archangel's call, and with the sound of God's trumpet, will descend from heaven, and the dead in Christ will first arise. Then we who are alive, who are left, will be caught up in clouds, together with them to meet the Lord in the air, and so we will be with the Lord forever. Therefore, encourage one another with these words, the word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be, be to God. God. We will sing Jesus Loves Me as the kids come closer to the TV and we hear the children's message. and worship and from your homes and most of you at least know what this is of course it is a lamp um, some of us maybe lived didn't live in a time where we had to use these for light but maybe some of you actually did but even the kids today uh, know what this is if they've gone camping and they know that it is a light and we know that uh, this one is not working yet so all we need to do is Get it lit up, but it does not seem to be working. And of course, why is it not working? Huh? Empty of what? You've been in the oil business, so it just oil. Have any oil. <laughs> you had to name the certain kind of fuel, didn't you, Jimmy? <laughs> Number one fuel. No. <laughs> Kerosene. Okay. It is out of oil. And we're going to hear a kind of a disturbing parable of ten bridesmaids. Each one had a lamp. And they go to the wedding, waiting for the bridegroom to come. And then that's when things start to divide. Because five of them with lamps are wise. Five of them are foolish. They all have lamps. But the only difference is the oil. And Jesus says something that we don't aren't used to him saying to us 
Uh, and we're going to hear about that, but we also need to know what this is. But in Sunday school, you maybe heard a song that relates to this, so we are going to sing that at this time. Give me oil in my lamp. song but we still need to know what's the oil we need and that's what we're going to hear in the message today let us pray heavenly father we thank you that you have drawn us into this place today to hear your word a word that begins scary but then ends in a great deal of promise for all of us as we find out this oil that we will receive from you this day and all this we pray in jesus name and all god's children Amen. Amen. Please stand for the gospel acclamation as you are able. gospel for this 23rd Sunday after Pentecost is according to Matthew, the 25th chapter. Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus said to his disciples, the kingdom of heaven will be like this. Ten bridesmaids took their lamps and went to meet the bridegroom. Five of them were foolish, five were wise. When the foolish took their lamps, they took no oil with them. But the wise took flasks of oil with their lamps. As the bridegroom was delayed, all of them became drowsy and slept. But at midnight there was a shout, Look, here is the bridegroom, come out to meet him. Then all the bridesmaids got up and trimmed their lamps. The foolish said to the wise, Give us some of your oil, for our lamps are going out. But the wise replied, No, There will not be enough for you and for us. You had better go to the dealers and buy some for yourselves. And while they went to buy it, the bridegroom came, and those who were were ready went into the wedding banquet, and the door was shut. Later the other bridesmaids came also, saying, Lord, Lord, open to us. But he replied, Truly I tell you, I do not know you. Keep awake, therefore, for you neither know the day nor the hour. This is the gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. You may be seated. Grace and peace to you from God our Father and from our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Amen. Have you ever been to a wedding and then when the ceremony was over, You dig out the invitation and look at it, only to learn that there is a long time before the reception is scheduled to begin. What do you do in that time of delay? Well, when that's happened to us, we sometimes meet up with other couples that we don't see very often, and we've gone somewhere to have some appetizers and perhaps a glass of milk with that to catch up what has been happening in each other's lives, to pass this time before the reception begins. And when we've done this, sometimes it's easy to get distracted in our conversation and lose track of the time that has passed, and what once seemed like an abundance of time turns into a mad dash in fear that we might miss the announcement of the arrival of the wedding couple before the banquet begins. 
At these wedding events, however, there isn't that kind of fear of being turned away by the bridegroom, as you heard in the reading for today. In the receptions that we've gone to and come late, we aren't afraid of the door being shut and not being able to enter into the banquet, even if we're a little late. And if we arrive late, we usually can get in, and there's, we're pretty sure that there's someone that we will know that will welcome us to join them at their table or maybe even get us cuts into the food line without anybody notice that we were tardy. In the reading from Matthew for today, we hear some of the harshest words recorded in Scripture when Jesus declares that there will come a time when for some it'll be too late and the door will be shut. I can't imagine hearing any words than these that are worse from Jesus than to hear him look at you and say, truly I tell you, I do not know you. And all of the scriptures for today point to the time in Jesus' second coming, as we call it, when time does come to an end and the door will be shut. The prophet Amos paints a similar, very gloomy picture of what it'll look like, especially for those who are on the wrong side of the door. This day won't look like those that we've had this past week with pleasant temperatures and plenty of sunshine. Instead, Amos says there will be darkness. It will be gloomy. And none of your offerings or songs of praise will be welcomed by him. And those who have decided to go somewhere else for appetizers, and notice how late that it has gotten, are in for a scary surprise when they arrive at the door of the banquet hall. Amos described these unprepared latecomers racing to the reception as if they were chased by a lion, but look ahead and then see a bear coming at them. And then, by somehow escaping both the lion and the bear, they finally reach the door to the reception, but find it closed. And as they lean up against this door in exhaustion and disbelief that they could have been excluded by simply being a little late, they're bitten by a snake. Yes, Amos paints a very discouraging portrait of what it will look like for those on the wrong side of the shut door that leads into the kingdom of heaven. The psalmist, on the other hand, has a little brighter view of this day when, the, when we have the delay of the coming of the bridegroom. The image the psalmist gives is more like when you have arrived at the banquet very early and you've eaten all the samples of hors d'oeuvres that are available, drank as much of sweet punch as you possibly can to save some room for the meal, And you get tired of waiting, and you are ready for the arrival of the bridegroom, and you're ready for the banquet to get started. You are ready for the bridegroom to appear. This is when you pray, come Lord Jesus, and you actually mean it. I have been with some of you by the bedsides of your family members who have prayed the words that the psalmist gave, O Lord, do not delay. Come quickly. If Jesus was interviewing for a job and after discussing all his strengths, and of course Jesus has many strengths to talk about, and if he was asked for if he had any areas of growth that he wanted to tell who he is interviewing from, and of course we no longer can call them weaknesses, these are areas of growth, Jesus might have to admit that punctuality is one of his traits where he might need some improvement. When Martha sent word to Jesus that her brother Lazarus was sick, once again he delayed four days until Lazarus was no longer just sick, but he had died. Others of you may wonder the same about Jesus' tardiness, thinking to yourselves or even crying out loud, why didn't Jesus arrive before I was diagnosed with cancer? Why did Jesus delay so long before receiving this new job opportunity? Why did Jesus delay in healing my illness? Why does Jesus continue to delay instead of speeding up the production of a vaccine for the coronavirus? 
Yes, there are times you too may have questioned what seems like to Jesus, seems to you like Jesus taking too long to act. And the Apostle Paul had to preach to his congregation in Thessalonica about this delaying, this tardiness of Jesus, because they had been informed that Jesus was coming again. It was written about 50 years after they had heard this, but after 50 years, people had started to die. Cemetery plots were being sold. People were dying, and those that were alive were still wondering, is Jesus actually coming again? They wondered if maybe death is what shut the door into the kingdom. But Paul preached this beautiful image of what the second coming of Jesus will look like when the graves will be opened and those who are alive will meet the Lord in the air. On our trip to Norway in 2016, I was fascinated by the architecture of many of the pulpits in the old churches, and I took pictures of several of them. And I noticed that they often had a door with a lock on it leading up to the pulpit. Honestly, I was troubled by the design of these pulpits. I thought, shouldn't they be open? Shouldn't you be able to just get right in and preach the word? At first, it didn't seem right to me for there to be a door on the pulpit. However, I was looking at them from the wrong side of the door. I was looking at them from the shut side of the door. I was looking at the image of the door like Amos described. After being chased by a lion and being confronted by a bear and finally arriving at the door, I saw the lock on the door. I was bitten by the snake, Satan, who put a word of doubt in my mind saying, sorry, I think it's too late. But I view the image of these pulpits in a new way because of the encouraging words from Paul that we heard today. The door may be shut, but it is not locked. It is easily opened. And what is on the other side of this door? God's word of promise, delivered from a preacher into your ears and making a home in your heart. You and I are, in fact, are living in time what can be described as the time of preaching. This is the time of delay before Jesus comes again. We are living in this time when he has not abandoned us. He is with us, with his word. And this can be a time of encouragement for all of us. A seminary professor was challenged by his students after he had taught them about this time of preaching. He said that faith comes only by hearing God's word, and we are saved by faith alone. But the students pushed back at the professor and said that such a God, how could we believe in such a God that has such a narrow view in order to enter the kingdom of God by faith alone? Aren't our lamps, aren't our good works enough to get us into heaven? Will God shut the door if your lamps don't have oil? So the students pushed back at these words of the professor and said, so then what should we be done with those who haven't heard this good news? And he said, that's exactly it. Leave this place and go out and tell them this good news. Yes, Jesus said the kingdom of heaven will be like this. Ten bridesmaids took their lamps to meet the bridegroom. Five of them were foolish. Five of them were wise. They all were bridesmaids. They all had lamps. They all fell asleep. The only difference between the wife and the foolish was the oil. This oil can't be self-produced. Oil can't be shared with, by getting it from someone else. But oil is necessary. What is the oil that is necessary for you to have while Jesus is delaying his second coming? What is the oil that encourages you knowing that you will not be on the wrong side of the door when Jesus comes again? What is the oil that cannot be taken from you and given to someone else? It is faith. 
Faith that is only given to you by the Holy Spirit. Faith that gives you hope when things seem hopeless. Faith that comes by hearing God's word spoken to you. Faith that silences Satan when he says, you don't need oil, your lamp is enough. Yes, the door will be shut one day, just as Jesus said. But until the door is shut, Jesus When the bridegroom appears, this door is open for all believers to preach this good news of salvation to all the world. Amen. And we sing the hymn of the day. you to stand as you are able as we confess our faith using the words of the Apostles Creed. I believe in God the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. And on the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, and the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you all. And also with you. At this time, we are welcome to share that sign of peace with each other here. And those of you online, we would be 
delighted to have you share a word of peace with us in the comment section of the live streaming. Let us know that you are listening to us today and we welcome that word of peace from you as well. You may be seated. Uh, we give thanks for the offerings that we continue to receive and for that we sing, Let the Vineyards Be Fruitful. Merciful Father, we yeah, offer with joy and thanksgiving what you have first given us, ourselves, our time, and our possessions, signs of your gracious love. Receive them for the sake of him who offered himself for us, Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. We continue to have people added to our prayer list and ask for our prayers uh, this time. Uh, and also we hear good news as well. Uh, every day this week I've been hearing Steps of Progress with Tom Zimzma and uh, uh, he's gaining strength and was it cream of wheat he had for breakfast today? So um, yeah, he's starting to eat and things are starting to work but uh, needs a lot of strength to come back. He continues in our prayers. Joan Bolt had a knee replacement this week and is doing well at home now. We pray for her. Uh, in the prayer chain that has come out here at East Nidros, uh you have learned of the death of Karen Doom's sister's grand uh, son, and so we raise that family up in our prayers. Uh, on Friday, we had Bob Krell's funeral. We continue to raise that family up in prayer. And this week, we'll be making plans for Pam Nessheim's uh, brother's funeral, Terry Hodney, and uh, continue to raise Pam and her family up in prayers this week. And uh, it doesn't end. I mean, even this morning, uh, we got news that Dixie Fiala's sister has passed away. And uh, so we are... Uh, thinking of her this morning too. So uh, the list is long, but also among this, we hear good news as well. Um, people calling, and that's fun to hear too, say, you can take my name off the list now. Um, Art La Odland, uh, in fact, Dale was down and visited with him this week, and he is doing well. And uh, we got a special treat that he's even singing for us in the postlude today. I wish we could hear his voice even a little stronger in the recording, but it's no secret that that's who's doing the singing with his voice. That is good to hear. And uh, yesterday, uh, Ben Kringen gave me a call, and uh, he had good reports in his uh, tests that were done this week. Also, we uh, are adding Todd Foster to our prayer list. He had a very significant surgery this week, and we raise him and his family up in prayers as uh, he receives healing. That's some of them, and uh, but we continue to pray. Longing for Christ's reign to come among us, we pray for the outpouring of God's power on the church, the world, and all in need. Holy God, rouse us to deep, to deep praise as we gather for worship this day. 
enliven our worship with sincere and heartfelt song as we long for this day when our churches will again be full of many voices singing your praise. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Holy Creator, surprise and delight us with the beauty of the world that you have made for us. Bless the work of landscapers, architects, and artisans who work invites us into harmonious living with your creation. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Holy Judge, let justice roll down like waters over this world, reign over the courtrooms of every land, in the hearts of those who, have, who guard the law and those who stand accused of crimes. Be present in cases where we long for both justice and mercy to prevail. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Holy Companion, console those who feel lonely or abandoned. Share the hours of those who live and eat alone. Comfort those who have few friends or struggle with their identity and place in this world. And bring healing to those who have been asked to be prayed for this day. Darla Singsaws, Todd Foster, Joan Bolt, Tom Simmonsma, Sharon Hamry, Ella Riswold, Vicki Lundstrom, Larry Thompson, Terry Tomerason, Tanya Vallen, Rhoda Wold, Norma Nyhaug, Ordell Krogsted, Paul Romsdahl, Don Vallen, John Jurgensen, Daryl McMahon, Jerome Johnson, Jordan Alderman, Ron Seam, Leroy Koopman, Don Williams, Fred Tiedemann, Mike Wustewald, Eugene Hawks, Javen Einan, Jessica Shaw, Ines Wilson, Darcy Mirmo, Oli Tevedal, David Anthony Qualseth, and those names now that we raise from our hearts. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Holy Protector, be with all observing Veterans Day. Guard the lives of active duty and retired military personnel. Comfort all who mourn those who have died in the line of duty. Heal their wounds, both physical and mental, experienced by service members. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Holy and immortal one, we pray in thanksgiving for the lives of all who have died. Remind us of the frailty and shortness of our own lives and inspire us to use them for the building up of your kingdom. Today we especially remember the families of Bob Krell, Terry Hodney, Matthew Bickner, and now the sister of Dixie Fiala, Renee. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Receive our prayers in the name of Jesus Christ, our Savior, until that day when you gather all creation around your throne, where you will reign forever and ever. Amen. Lord, remember us in your kingdom as you have taught us to pray. Our Father, Father who, who art, art in heaven, heaven hallowed, hallowed be thy, thy name. name. Thy, thy kingdom, kingdom come. come. Thy, thy will be done, done on earth as it is in heaven. heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. And now, Almighty God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, bless you now and always. I invite you to join in as we sing our sending hymn. Oh. 
until we meet again, go in peace and serve your neighbor. Yes, we will. Thanks be to God. And as you listen to our post load, you will hear Art in the background sing our closing song. <laughs>